everyone and welcome back to the Science Explorer. My name is Tiffany and I am here to bring you another Technology Spotlight episode. This episode is kindly brought to you by Molecular Devices. So Molecular Devices have been providing their customers with innovative bioanalytical solutions for more than 30 years and they help to advance discovery in protein and cell biology around the globe. To find out more about the company you can click the link in the description below. But today I'm very pleased to be joined by Timothy Bolas, the Compliance Program Manager at Molecular Devices. So thank you so much for joining me today, Tim. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. And yourself? Ec yeah, excellent. Yeah, no, great, thank you. So I think we'll delve straight in. So could you tell us a bit more about the Title 21 regulatory compliance and who these apply to? Okay, um, Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations, known as 21 CFR, are the rules and regulations set aside for food and drug. Um, it's divided into many parts that are managed by the Food and Drug Administration and the drug enforcement agencies. Um, in the context of drug development processes, um, a lot of these regulations fall into place. Um, let's begin with the drug, um, the drug discovery process, where a scientist um, be they in an academic institution or a pharmaceutical company or a government agency want to find a pro um, medicinal product to meet um, an, an unmedical met need. So they will do a lot of the drug discovery science experiments and um, all the way up to the research and development processes, there are regulations put in place here, especially for the collection of data. And then they will file for an investigational drug license um, and there's a set of regulations for that. Um, and then now that they're ready to test this on human subjects um, and going into the clinical, the clinical trial phase, they um, there's a set of regulations there, especially for the collection of data and for the protection of the human subjects. And then there's also the manufacturing processes that are in place. Um, putting all of these together, um, and I mentioned the collection of data, are the data integrity requirements um, where part 11 comes in. So part 11 talks about electronic records and electronic signatures, and it spans all the way through the drug processes where make sure that data is, is safe and, or our products are safe and that the data is not manipulated in any way. You know, and anybody that's manufacturing a product or doing clinical studies or even doing non-clinical studies However, they collect data, they all use electronic records and they are subject to Part 11 compliance. Perfect, thank you for that overview. So I guess since the uh, focus today is regulatory labs, um, what are the consequences if there's a lapse in these standards? There are consequences for non-compliance. Um, the FDA can come unannounced, they can do inspections at will. And when they come to a pharmaceutical company or um, that are manufacturing products, they can um, do, have observations. They see that um, we have, that, uh, that a company is not following their own quality standards. They can issue 483s or citations. And basically it's just saying, you're not following your own quality standards or you're not following the processes that you set forth. And you, the, the corporations have X amount of time to resolve these issues. And, FDA will come back later and say, did you resolve these? And when they see that there has been no mitigations or there's no improvement, then they can issue a warning letter. And in those warning letters, this is basically the formal introduction of you're violating the regulation in this um, predicate rule that you are in violation of this and therefore your products can be considered adulterated. And then that can cascade into um, a corporate shutdown or they can no longer distribute their product for uh, they can't distribute it throughout the country and other countries that may um, are not following the regulations, they will, not, they will not allow their products in as well. Yes, perfect. So how does Molecular Devices um, as a company assist their customers um, making sure that they achieve their regulatory compliance? Yes, we have a, um, a compliance software, SoftMax Pro, and we have a GXP edition. So the, the X in the GXP can be for GLP, it can be for GMP, for manufacturing. So we use this to ensure that our customers can be compliant to Part 11 requirements. Um, our newest software features uh, a database. 
Um, and here we have controlled and secure access to our data. So no, any, not anybody can come in, it's only those that have access to the system can access their files and folders. And then we also have a system audit trail that tells us who did what in the system and what they did. So it, it gives a good, um, gives you a good audit trail of who did what. And if they were able to delete anything, then they can investigate that, why they were able to delete files or make changes to files to see if there was any manipulation of data or any um, malicious intent. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> No, that makes sense. So why do um, your regulatory customers trust molecular devices then? We do have a lot of comeback customers. Um, they see that our software is compliant or helps them be compliant to 21 CFR Part 11. And basically they come back to us and um, they give us feedback, but we also help provide services for them. We help them, we, we do software validation and we do um, microplate reader qualification, we um, have field service engineers come in to do the um, plate reader qualifications. And then we provide them reports, signed reports. Let's say, um, your, here's your equipment, and you're ready to go. And we also have spectra test validation plates that our customers can purchase, and then they can do performance qualification of the plate readers. Perfect, that sounds great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk us through this and giving us a bit more insight. And I hope that everyone at home has enjoyed this interview. If you have any questions at all for Tim, please do leave them in the um, comments below and we will try to get you some answers as quick as we can. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, have a good day. You Bye. Too.